a little bit towards the end, we became friends in the last uh, five or six years. I what wish it had been sooner, actually. What sort of a man was he? Actually, rather courtly, reticent, um, not an easy man to get to know. I mean, there, there was something of a polite mask there, and every now and then it would drop and it would be marvellous. I mentioned rather clumsily in the introduction that he was one of the greatest, reckoned to be one of the greatest mm -hmm. writers of the second half of the 20th century. Do you think he's bigger than that? I, I mean, for me, I, and I, this is my opinion, I think uh, he was the greatest novelist writing in English at the time of his death. And uh, I, I think if he'd only written short stories, we would know him with deep respect for that a considerable poet. But the novels, the rabbit, uh, tetralogy, obviously. But I think the comic masterpiece, the Beck novels, the novellas, the three or four novellas, in which Beck, of course, wins the Nobel Prize that Updike never did. Are you able to be more precise about why he's such a great writer? It's something to do with the breadth. I mean, sex, art, religion, uh, a restless intellectual curiosity, a really muscular intellect, I mean, really sinuous intellect. But he could turn a sentence. I think that was... The, it's the pleasure. Uh, I think Updike readers keep their husbands and wives awake at night reading the paragraph, the sentence, the lovely little turn, the, the little thing that he often referred to in the sentence. It, it's got to have this little There's spring. There's a sort of precision to it. A precision and something quite um, jolted about the grammar that suddenly catches your attention, something that surprises... Uh, so, yes, I think he, he's a great man, a great namer of things. Uh, you say the greatest writer in, in English, but he was a specifically American writer, wasn't he? He was a very What American was it he called about America? Urban decay, small-town life, uh, the pressures of falling in love and then falling out of love, which he did both with a tragic and, and great comic touch. Very good on religious belief. I mean, uh, his religion, I think he was... As, as Presbyterian as you could get to bring you to be an atheist. I mean, it was as, he was as low church, in a sense. And he understood about religious doubt. I mean, uh, wrote beautifully on, on, on religious doubt. Marvellous uh, novel, uh, Roger's version, uh, uh, about a man who gets, uh, gets to know a young uh, PhD computer scientist who's going to prove to him that God exists through science. Do you buy the argument he was a very male writer? I didn't know really what that means. Uh, I know a lot of women don't like his writing, but uh, I'm happy to say that uh, Annalena, my wife, does. In fact, we met, in a sense, over Updike. Uh, uh, Tremendous uh, amount of sex in many of them. It's terrific, the sex in Updike. I don't think many writers can touch Updike on sex. It's quite a cold eye, uh, almost hilariously visual. And also, uh, there's always a uh, mischief in the disjunction between what's going on between two people and what's going on in the mind, usually of the man, um, running against what's actually happening. And he kept right bang, banging on about sex right, and right to the end. No, he, he, he kept his faith in that, I'm pleased to say. Did he change the way that novels are written, do you think? I would say he was, he was a conservative master. I mean, if, if you had a music equivalent, I would say he's Bach. You know, uh, he, he was not interested in writing a Finnegan's Wake, as it were. He wasn't uh, an explosive, magical realist. He, he turned a traditional, beautiful sentence. Sure, but he was also immensely popular, too, and mm. successful, wasn't he? Yes, he showed us, like 19th century writers, that it's possible to be a serious writer and a popular writer. He thought that the novel was, was a popular form, a demotic form. And many of his figures, his heroes, are men of the street. I mean, Rabbit is quite a low-life character. Um, not an intellectual. And the great trick of Updike was to somehow give you the world through the fine mesh of a brilliant mind, i.e. Updike's, but let the reader live all that through a rather uneducated man. It's a great rhetorical trick, not easy to do. Dear McEwen, thank you very much. Thanks.